What's up guys, Rodas up here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new PvP dev diary that we got going here from Radbeard. And uh, I'm pretty excited about this. I haven't read the article yet, so it's going to be like a first time read for me. But uh, some of the spells that were banned, <laughs> and yes, that, that is right, some of the TCs were banned, um, they were spoiled for me. But outside of that, everything that they're about to say here as uh, new information for me. And maybe there's some TC that I weren't aware were banned that were. Uh, so let's just get into it here. Uh, this first paragraph is kind of just addressing the uh, fact that this isn't going to affect PVE at all. And it looks like, okay, so we're gonna get into critical hits and block. So, okay, uh, looks like we, okay, yeah. So they recently tweeted a poll on how people feel about PVP. And uh, generally the responses were I mean, this is accurate, right? That the damage should stay about the same, um, but that they should happen less frequently. So based on the feedback, we're going to tweak some parameters to produce the following results. Critical hits will happen less frequently. The di Huh? Wait, I'm so confused. So they're going to make critical hits happen less frequently, but blocks will also happen less frequently? Mm, I don't I don't think they understood what the community wanted when they said we want less criticals I, I think that what they were implying was that we should be blocking critical hits more often uh, not that people actually had a problem with the amount of crits that were happening um, it's kind of fun actually to crit just about every hit that you're doing so that that was always cool um, I was enjoying that part of the update but what I was not enjoying is that blocks were happening not as much as they should have because, you know, people are investing a lot of stats in the block right now and it seems like it's not really paying off that much. So I was hoping that blocks would happen more frequently, but it, it, when you make critical hits and blocks happen less frequently, uh, that's like, that's like just increasing RNG. Like that's just totally increasing RNG. Um, I don't know if if OB, no, it doesn't show the calculator. Okay, so I have a calculator pulled up here. Um, let's say that you have a 50% chance to critical and a 50% chance to block, right? Uh, based on those two numbers, the actual percentage chance of both a crit and a block occurring is 25%, um, because you have one over two times one over two, which is one fourth, which is 0.25 or 25%. Um, if we decrease both of these, so like, let's say now you only have a 25% chance to critical, uh, the chances of you getting a critical and then it resulting in a block, if you have the same numbers, if we lower it down to 0.25, uh, is now only 0 0.0625, which, um, for those of you who don't know, is 1 eighth or 6.25% compared to 25%. So it makes things a lot more RNG if you decrease both of these. And I think players are gonna be a lot more angry because the chance of them critting is lower, but if they do critical, the chance of you blocking is also subsequently lower. So it just feels bad overall. But yeah, I don't, I don't really think I agree with this. I think that the blocks should be, if anything, increased because that's what the community wanted. Uh, and I mean, honestly, I wouldn't have changed the, like, I wouldn't have changed this. I wouldn't have changed critical hits at all. I would have just made block more effective. Um, that's what I would have done, but that's just me. Uh, I'm going to pause the video real quick and look at all these, because this is a lot of text I don't want to read in front of you guys. So um, I'm going to read this and then give you my thoughts. Okay, so after reading all this, uh, they actually mention exactly what I just talked about, which is the fact that by subsequently lowering both, you're going to increase the RNG factor of this. So I'm glad that they mentioned this, because um, like I said, that's what my initial impression was. As far as these changes go, they're just talking about things that really don't, like the reader's digest of this version is exactly what I just said and exactly what they're saying here, is that things are going to feel more RNG, more swingy. Um, but he does say that the good news is that it's fairly easy to make changes so we can try something else after a suitable trial period. So they're basically saying here that they're going to make these changes, um, but they don't think people are going to like them. So, But they're okay with that because it's a pretty easy thing to fix. And from a coding perspective, I can see why they're saying that. It's literally just changing the numbers of 
constants in your formulas. So it's, it's really not hard for them to continue playing around with those numbers. Um, but anyway, so that's good. Um, I don't really like this, actually. I think that blocks should be higher, if anything, not lower. But besides that, I think that these are good, and I think it's really good that they're acknowledging that they plan on uh, tinkering around with these even more. All right, so we have matchmaking. Uh, first in the category of known issues, opt-in, okay. Yeah, I mean, so the thing with this matchmaking is that it is still a little broke because, you know, I was, I don't know if you guys saw, I tweeted out, like, I think last week or something, that I was playing uh, Legendary PvP on my ice, and for some reason I kept getting matched against a player that was a level 90 Storm Wizard with 3.5k rank, uh, and I wasn't even being told, like, oh, this may be an unfair matchup, do you want to still accept? No, I was just being sent, you know, I was just being put in that match. So I kept accepting it, thinking that it wasn't. It was either a not going to be him, or b be a fair match, and it was neither. And I lost. Mm, excuse me. I lost several matches due to that. So I don't know. I hope I hope they fix matchmaking because um, I've heard similar experiences of players that are currently doing uh, exalted PvP that they're versing max level wizards and stuff for like no reason, and they're not being warned of it either. So I hope they fix that, because uh, that was a big problem with matchmaking, is this like really weird level imbalance. Um, all right, so pre-enchant, the last update we saw, no one pre-enchant, okay. Uh, solar Surge, oh, okay. Oh, and okay, at, at this time we intend to continue. Okay, that's fair. So I think that, yeah, I mean, they're saying that it's like creating a new meta. I think that generally players are more happy with this change than not, because um, it does encourage different deck building, deck building like options, and of course it does kind of help players that uh, maybe had to run a larger deck anyway, and you know, uh, compared to these players that were able to run super small decks and immediately pull for everything that they need, and just draw all of their hits out of side. So it, it was super easy to streamline a deck, but uh, now, you know, there's going to be a lot more thought and consideration uh, when it comes to deck building. So, yeah, I think that I think that overall, this is actually kind of a decent change. So I, I'm not I'm not really against Solar Surge or anything. Uh, I think that that's fine for the meta. I do like that. I mean, I like and I dislike because I do have to kind of relearn that like 2013 meta of having a completely full deck and having enchants and hits in your main deck. It's a throwback for sure, but I think that I can relearn it and I think that, you know, everyone else can do the same. It's not that hard and hopefully it will make things a little more balanced. Uh, so they say, why isn't Cyril? Yeah, this is a question that I had actually because the, <laughs> the last video I posted uh, was literally just because I couldn't have Solar Surge on my legend, on my legend balance yet because he was new to PvP. Uh, so he's saying that we don't want legit PvP newbies to... Okay, I don't think that that's a fair argument. Uh, we do want players to feel... I mean... Again, I don't really agree with this because there are reasons to be a Warlord outside of just that spell. <laughs> and they say that it's not... In it kind of is uh it kind of is like if you're at max level and you don't have solar surge it is a huge disadvantage to you you have to do some whack strategies to get by because think about it that's like you're losing 300 base damage on like a six pip shadow spell or you're losing 200 damage on a four pip spell like th these are real numbers like this isn't like, oh, it's just a little bit of damage. No, that is a huge disadvantage. That is a huge difference, you know. Like when you're, let's, let's whip out the calculator again, okay? To really show you guys what I mean. Um, so let's say you have a base damage of 1,000. Okay, 1,000. Uh, and this is the non-Solar Surge player. So he's using a spell or she's using a spell that's 1,000 damage and has 100 damage. So we know that this would do 2,000 damage 
not much quick math. I probably didn't need a calculator for this. Um, the difference between that and a solar surge is, let's say it was a six pip spell, so you get the full 300 solar surge. That's a difference in base damage of 2600 versus 2000. Uh, that's a difference of 600 damage. That's crazy. Like that is a that is a huge amount. So if you're hitting your opponent for 2,000 and they're hitting you back for 2,600 because you guys have like similar stats or whatever, that's not really fair. Um, I think that if they're going to make Solar Surge something that is the only option available for an enchant in PvP, it has to be available to privates because it's just really not fair. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's my thoughts on it because I, I think Solar Surge should be available to everyone. But anyway... Uh, moving on, meta. Oh, this is the big one. <laughs> meta changes. So match timers are now back to thirty minutes. You know, all right. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, forty-five minute timer is pretty disgusting. I think that thirty is a lot more interesting and fair. Oh god. So, and then here's the big change, boys. Here's what's coming. Oh man. So the no PvP flag has been applied to the following TCs. All minus 90 Efreets and off school Efreets. <laughs> oh lord. So you can no longer use minus 90 Efreet TC at all. And this includes all the weird off school variants like Sirocco and things like that. But we also have Ice Birds, Frozen Bats, Ice Elves in Arctic Zillas. Wow. <laughs> that, that, that is a lot right there. There's a lot to talk about just here alone. I Frozen Bats is questionable whether or not that needed to be bur or sorry, nerfed because it was a trap as opposed to a, a blade. But I can see why they did it. I mean, I could just be salty because I'm going to be honest with you guys. I predicted that they were going to uh, ban ice birds so I started investing in frozen bats and it looks like looks like that's not really gonna happen either so that's fine but um, basically if you guys are wondering why these top three were banned uh, maybe I mean I'm sure they'll probably say it down here but these just offered a ridiculous amount of value to the ice wizard because you know, in the case of Icebird, they can just keep spamming Icebird and its shields until they finally get an open hit with a Weaver and a Blade, and it just does ridiculous damage. Um, same thing with Ice Elf. The fact that they can just put on a 2-pip AoE, <laughs> and then while that AoE is going, or not AoE, Dot, well, they can put a 2-pip Dot on the opponent, and while the Dot's going off, they can just hide behind shields and braces and things like that until they, again, finally get an open shot with Weaver. Um, because that's how it just, it seems like that's Ice's play style right now, is that uh, they're able to get around shields with overtimes and just kind of sit behind disgustingly high defenses until they finally get open weavers on you. And Weaver also increases their defense because it puts a shield on them. So it's like this horrific cycle that Ice has been able to do. Um, but banning these f four cards is really going to kind of stunt their damage output. Um, because these three are going to keep them from, you know, having really good options to stall into weavers. And then this final one is a really good thing to keep them from being able to get an easy four pip kill uh, after they use all their shadow pips. Finally, though, this is interesting. These these two are extremely interesting. Enfeeble and Aftershock. This was a really hard counter to the Death School. And... I think that death is going to be really good in this new meta if Enfeeble and Aftershock don't exist. Um, their only two really bad matchups at that point are going to be Myth, because they can still have Earthquake, and Storm, who still has Catch of the Day, and Enfeeble. Um, but every other school, they can't just easy counter death anymore by packing these inside. And I kind of agree with it, because Aftershock and Enfeeble, I mean, Enfeeble, you can't even trade. Like, that you just had to have those uh, and aftershock teams see i mean they were expensive like they were totally a um, basically pay to win you know you have to get it on the black market kind of tc so i'm glad that they're not promoting that in pvp because i don't think that that's very healthy for the game 
but yeah. And then finally, Shift. I actually didn't know that this one was banned. Uh, I'm interested to see like their reasoning for Shift. I mean, Triage isn't listed, which is great because that would be too broken. Um, but I'm interested to see why they banned Shift because it is powerful, but it, it doesn't really seem broken per se. Um, but anyway, so yeah, players have been waiting for the minus 90 E free ban. Yep. Yep, that's true. Uh, and it sh <laughs> our data shows that ICE has consistently been at the top of the PvP rankings for years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're trying to fix ICE right now. Okay, so basically what they're trying to do with ICE is uh, they're trying to fix it through like a total gear and stat rebalance. But just as a hot fix... They can take away these four spells from them right now as a way to, uh, again, sort of like serve as a hot fix for the fact that they're ridiculously broken. Uh, and in Feebles, after Shock and Shift all fall in the same category. To some degree, as TCs, these spells are too widely available to all schools, diluting school identity, offer too much value in tempo, and are frankly too much of a hard counter to certain schools. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, I do agree agree with this on the case of death. I don't know why they're worried about fire. Fire doesn't even do that right now. They're just trap stacking, and trap stacking is uncounterable, so nothing we can really do about that. Um, but shift... I mean... I don't know. I don't know. I think that Enfeeble and Aftershock are really good for death and other schools that want to blade stack. Um, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure if shift was really needed. Because again, death really, because like death really wasn't even using blades to do an overtime per se. Uh, it was typically to deadly minnow or do something else. So, and then they say that one could argue with this. No, <laughs> no, Tri triage should not. Perhaps one does end up on that. No, what? I don't think they understand how broken that would be. Like, they can't put triage on the no PvP list. Making life the only school that can actually access uh, triage is a problem. It's a huge problem because then any school that has blades will just blade up, use a ridiculously strong overtime, and PvP is just going to be dumb because there's only that would mean that only one school can deal with the overtime. And basically every single school except Balance has a good overtime because Myth has King Art, Death has several, uh, Fire has several, Ice has several. Uh, I guess Storm doesn't technically have one. They have Monsoon Hound and Storm Hound, which can kind of be used, um, but definitely not to the effectiveness of um, the other one. So I, yeah, in, in, a, in a world where people can just blade up instantly and, you know, use some crazy overtime. I think that Balance and Storm get shafted big time. But I don't know. I think that something that's missing from the game right now, if we're taking away Enfeeble, Aftershock, and all that, there needs to be not a hard counter, but something that can at least be done to counter trap stacking strategies and blade stacking strategies because... Currently, people have so much health and so much resistance that it's really, really easy to aggressively blade stack or aggressively trap stack and just win because your opponent just simply can't kill you in time. So, I don't know. I think that overall these were good changes. Um, but I I'm very on board with the ban list. Uh, but I think that critical is that's not good the critical change i think needs to be reworked again and uh also i think that mutate tc needs to be allowed to be pre-enchanted i don't really understand why those were a part of that um but you know i don't know i think that they should be though i think that they should be able to be put in your deck like you know spells like midnight sprite uh fire wyvern you know stuff like that should be allowed and uh yeah that's really it that's all i've got to say um i do disagree with their solar surge thing not being available to privates because at max level that kind of makes things impossible but yeah 
I don't know. But let me know what you guys think of these changes. Uh, what other spells would you like to see on the ban TC list? That's what I'm really curious about. Uh, and if you enjoyed today's video, of course, make sure to leave a like and all that good stuff. And that's all I've got to say. We're going to zap out. Peace.